the easy one is I've been using chat uh, GPT for, oh, for all my newsletter or podcast images. Uh, when I type in, I want a picture of whatever, and I need something for this podcast. I type that in. It generally gives me the exact thing that I want. On the, I very rarely have to go into something else. And I can put it into my newsletter, put it into the podcast. And that's wonderful. And it saves me a lot of time because I used to go out and say, what, what royalty-free images can I use? Or if I really wanted to get crazy, I would ask a designer to put something together, which makes no sense for a podcast image to do that. I don't want, I just want something visual. It doesn't have to be great. It doesn't have to be perfect. Done. So I've been using that. That's one for, for images. Um, so what, what I have been using it more of is if there's a report, let's say I did this with a financial report is about a 60 or 75, 60 to 75 page financial report that I wanted to go through and know the high points, but I didn't want to read it. <laughs> so I threw that right. into chat GPT and it uploaded it. And I said, would you please give me a summary of all the important points of this document? I do that all the time now. So that works really well. And then I think I shared this with you on the podcast previously uh, for my first novel, The Will to Die, when I need to know something about a character's past or what they've done, and I've already written it, but maybe I can't remember it, or I don't want to bring get out the hard copy and figure this thing out. I've thrown that into, I've got a whole thread on Chat GPT where I can refer to and say, tell me about Ro what's Robbie's history, what's Robbie's birthday, uh, how did Robbie and Will meet, uh, you know, how did how did uh what were the details specific details about will's father dying whatever questions i need to ask because i'm writing a sequel to that that's really really helpful so i love that with any long form content where i need to use and ping that specifically and ask questions about that data so i've got multiple threads set up into chat gpt 4 that will that i can use and say okay i'm going to that one i need to ask that one questions and that works uh, really, really well. And then I just shared this one about travel. I, I do, <laughs> I do a lot of travel planning and I love to plan travel. So I will go in and I will set up a thread. And I think I mentioned before, uh, about, uh, going to Bavaria. So I will ask a whole thread about Bavaria and I will have a look at different links that I'm interested in. And I would basically create a thread on, on expertise around going to Bavaria and it will spit out itineraries for me. And I will tweak those itineraries on that. But based on, I would say, well, take out all the uh, Hitler stops. I don't want to see anything about Hitler. I want to, I want to exchange that for, for to go to a, a beer garden or something like that, which is a true thing. I'm actually working on that. Yeah. And then I'm, then I would say, okay, great. That itinerary, how do I do this without renting a car? Or how do I do this? And, and it saves so much time, Robert, by just setting up those small threads. And of course, I mean, you can, if you're talking about marketing strategy or whatever, you can do the same kinds of things. I'm just not working on my content strategy now. I'm working on traveling, but I use it for the same types of things. And that's where I keep going over and over. Whereas I used to have to spend a lot of time on search, or I used to have to ask for an assistance help or something. I can do this myself with an individual thread. And as I teach these threads a little bit more to create whatever it is about ones about finances and ones about travel. And I have these all set up uh, to help me uh, optimize my life, if you will. Um, that's what's, that's where I'm getting the most bang for my buck right now when it comes to uh, AI. Mm -hmm.